Our Lady of Pontmain, otherwise known as Our Lady of Hope, has a special place in my heart. It was she that I believe appeared to me when I was in a coma from my heart attack that I had years ago. To hear about this story, check out my heart attack video or click on the link above. But now, let's hear about this unusual but charming apparition that happened 152 years ago. This apparition is said to have occurred at the height of the war, the Franco-Prussian War, also called the War of 1870. Pontmain, a small village of about 500 people, was filled with hard-working country folk. The Barbadette family consisted of a husband and wife and their three boys, the oldest having gone away to the army. On the evening of January 17, 1871, the two boys were helping their father in the barn when Eugene, aged 12, walked over towards the door to look out. He was stunned to see in the sky an apparition of a beautiful woman who was suspended in the air, hovering over a neighbor's house. She smiled at him. She was wearing a blue gown covered with golden stars, a black veil, and a golden crown with a red stripe across it. On her feet were dark blue slippers. Eugene's brother, Joseph, aged 10, went to see what Eugene was staring at, and he too saw the beautiful lady. Their father, seeing the boy's excitement, looked outside as well, but all he saw were three bright stars in the sky in the form of a triangle. Now the mother, hearing all the excitement, came outside to see what the fuss was about. But seeing nothing, she went back into the house to get her glasses. She came out to look. Still nothing. The two parents insisted to the boys that they were seeing things and told them to come in for their dinner. Reluctantly, they went in to eat their meal, but as soon as they were done, they ran outside to see if the lady was still there. To their delight, she was, and she was still in the same spot as before, hovering in the air and smiling, not looking in the least upset that they had gone in to eat their supper. Now the parents are a little worried that perhaps there may be something to this. They sent for Sister Vitaline, the boy's teacher at the school. She, as well, could see nothing in the sky. It was suggested that the parish priest be called, and soon the priest, along with the neighbor, came to investigate but saw nothing. Sister Vitaline, wondering if only children could see the apparition, called for two girls, Francoise Ricker and Jean-Marie Labosse, aged 9 and 11. However, when they sent for them, they purposely didn't say anything about the apparition to the two girls to see what they would do. And just like the boys, the girls were startled to see the lady in the sky, but then excitedly began to describe the beautiful lady exactly as the boys had described her. Soon, word of the miraculous vision spread throughout the village, and a crowd of about 60 adults came to see if they could also see the lady. As before, only the children could see her, and the adults only saw three stars in a triangle. The parish priest suggested praying the rosary. As they prayed, the children saw the golden stars on the garment multiply until it was almost completely gold. Then, a banner unfurled beneath the lady's feet. Slowly, as though written by an invisible hand, golden letters appeared. The message read, But pray, my children. Upon hearing the message read aloud by the children, the adults started to pray the litany of the Blessed Virgin. Now, more words began to appear on the banner. My son. At these new words, the crowd is sure that the woman is the Blessed Virgin Mary. They prayed a fifth prayer, and the message is finished with, is waiting for you. The people now begin to sing a popular hymn in Pontmain, Mother of Hope. At this song, Our Lady smiles and laughs and moves her hands in time with the music. At this, the children began to point and squeal with glee. The crowd of adults then began to sing another song, My Sweet Jesus. At this song, the lady became very sad and a red crucifix appeared in her hands. The words, Jesus Christ, appeared over the crucifix, and she gazed sorrowfully at the red crucifix as the crowd sang the song. At the end of this song, they began a new one and sang Ave Marie Stella. At this, the crucifix disappeared, and the lady began to smile again, although with a hint of sadness remaining. Two small white crosses then appeared over her shoulders, as though resting on them. 
Then slowly, a white veil began to float upward, eventually covering the apparition completely, and Our Lady disappeared. The vision lasted for three hours. That same evening, Prussian forces abandoned their advance. General von Schmidt of the Prussian army, who was about to move on the city of Laval towards Pontmain, received orders from his commander not to take the city. On the evening of January 17, 1871, the commander of Prussian forces, having taken up his quarters at the Archiepiscopal Palace of Le Mans, told the bishop of that diocese, by this time, my troops are at Laval. On the same evening, the Prussian troops in sight of Laval stopped at half past five o'clock, about the time when the apparition first appeared above Pontmain, a few miles away. General Schmidt is reported to have said on the morning of the 18th, We cannot go farther. Yonder, in the direction of Brittany, there is an invisible Madonna barring the way. The sudden stopping of the Prussian forces in sight of Laval and their retirement the following morning meant, together with the saving of Brittany, the war was practically at an end. On January 23, 1871, a treaty was signed. Soon, all 38 men and boys returned home unharmed. The children grew up, and the two boys, Eugene and Joseph, became priests. One of the two girls that also saw the Blessed Virgin became Father Eugene's housekeeper, while the other girl became a nun. Years later, Father Joseph Barbadette describes the vision in this detail. She was young and tall of stature, clad in a garment of deep blue, her dress was covered with brilliant gold stars. The sleeves were ample and long. She wore slippers of the same blue as the dress, ornamented with gold bows. On the head was a black veil, half covering the forehead, concealing the hair and ears, and falling over the shoulders. Above this was a crown resembling a diadem, higher in front than elsewhere, and widening out at the sides. A red line encircled the crown at the middle, her hands were small and extended toward us, as in the miraculous metal. Her face had the most exquisite delicacy and a smile of sweetness. The eyes of unutterable tenderness were fixed on us. Like a true mother, she seemed happier in looking at us than we were in contemplating. After the apparition of Our Lady of Hope, on January 17, 1871, pilgrims made up of both the clergy and the laity came to Pontmain. At the same time, investigations were made about the apparition, and the visionary children were submitted to various intense interrogations. In May of 1872, the construction of a shrine was authorized, which was consecrated in October of 1900. In 1905, Pope Pius X elevated the sanctuary to the status of a minor basilica. Pope Pius XI gave a final decision regarding the Mass in office in honor of Our Lady of Hope of Pontmain. A final papal honor was given to Our Lady of Hope on July 16, 1932, by Cardinal Paselli, who later became Pope Pius XII, by passing a decree from the chapter of St. Peter's Basilica that the statue of the Blessed Lady, Mother of Hope, be solemnly honored.